Good morning and welcome to another exercise in meditation. Meditation to give us another perspective on our existence, to remove ourselves momentarily and to strengthen the muscle of the spiritual so that that muscle can become more a part of our daily life. And we do this by dropping into the quiet, silent center of what we truly are and which is often ignored in our day-to-day life. Almost always ignored. But when we start to strengthen that muscle which all of us have, life becomes a little different. The way we see it becomes a little different. We become able to be more calm, able to take things as they come, able to (laughs) be stronger than we thought we might be. And it's not through becoming determined about something and it's not through wishing to be something other than we are, it's about becoming who we truly are, which is all of those things. So we begin with a thorough relaxation of the body, body representing sort of the, the nexus, the, the, the holder of all that we truly are and, and all that we believe ourselves to be. And the body holds all of those beliefs. And so for now, we're going to as best we can, allow those beliefs to just fall away for now, for a few minutes, for these 25, 30 minutes. And let them slide into the background. And the foreground will become just sitting here, being here at this moment. No concepts about who we are in the world, what gender we are, whether we're a mom or a dad or a worker or whatever we are. All those things just drop away. We'll move back maybe even before we were given a name. where we took on any form of worldly identity. Seems like a tall order, but it's right here. We are that. Here's how we go. The only concept we're going to employ is the metaphor that the body is a container that is, at this point, full of some sort of movable substance, maybe a liquid. And we'll just sense that the body is full of this liquid, and we can use the sensations in the body to sort of reinforce and and, uh, make that happen for us. So we're a body sitting, 
breathing. And we can feel this liquid, as it were, at the top of the skull and, and our attention, which is one of the most powerful things, if not the most powerful thing that we possess. Our attention becomes focused on the top of the skull, resulting in the awareness of sensations going on at the top of the skull, maybe some air moving hairs or a cool breeze reaching down to the skin of the scalp, a little movement of air, these things very real. We're just, our attention is all on those at this moment. Top of the skull. And this liquid is going to represent tensions in the body. And as we allow it to lower, to drop down in the body and as it were, go out through the tips of the fingers and the toes as we move it down. We begin to sense a little down from the top of the skull, above the top of the ears, moving into the forehead. Are the muscles in the forehead tense and knotted up at all? If so, you just let them go. Let that tension drop with our metaphorical liquid till we come to the tops of the ears. And we can start to sense the top of the ears again. Air movement, temperature, nerve endings all these very simple things going on in the body all the time. We don't have to create a scenario, anything, give it a name, say to ourselves, oh, I'm feeling maybe more spiritual now. No, don't, don't go there. Keep it really simple. Just this sensation, tops of the ears, the eyebrows, the concavity in the skull where the eyes rest, the muscles around the eyes, lots of little muscles, we let them go. Let the eyeball itself relax. almost seeing from behind the eyeball. And then another breath and the, drop. the level drops a little more to the bottom of the eye cavity. And those muscles around the bottom of the eye and the top of the cheeks Different people have different experiences. For some people, this is no problem area. So for some others, we tend to squint in questioning. And, you know, we use, we use all our muscles somehow in this expression of this identity of who we believe ourselves to be. Let's let those go. And again, the level drops with the breath. Maybe if the out breath, if that suits you, whatever works. We're now down to the center of the ears, the jaw muscles, the cheek muscles, the center of those, down toward the nostrils, the tip of the nose moving into the upper lip area. 
and dropping away from that. Further into the jaw. Let your jaw hang loose. Maybe move it up and down just a little bit so you, you know that it's, there's no tension. Muscles in the upper lip. Muscles surrounding the area at the back of the lips. There's a small area where there aren't less muscles. They're kind of around behind that and coming down into the chin. And sense lower teeth, tongue resting between them on the floor of the mouth. Maybe taking a scan back up to see if anything's recurring in the brow, the eyes, the cheeks. Now we're down to the bottom of the ears. We'll go around to the nape, the back of the neck, a little bit up to the top of the spine. All of our attention is here. If it wants to roam off to what's for lunch or, oh my God, I have a two o'clock appointment. Don't try and rein it in. Just take a breath and let it go. Just let it go. Come back to your chin. The neck. The neck muscles going down into the tops of the shoulders. And then today we'll do both arms as one with the level dropping into the top of the shoulders, sensing any temperature, air movement around the armpit. the upper arms, the light hairs of the arm being moved by little air, air movements. We're getting essential here. All the stuff, you just let, let it drop away. Maybe there's a sense of expanse or cleanliness or whatever. Don't dwell on those things. Just enjoy them as we move down the arms to the elbows. into the upper arms, the forearms, toward the wrists. As we move towards the wrists, if your hands are resting on your thighs, you can feel the weight of the hands on the thighs. You feel that little temperature difference or they're touching. Again, nothing to dwell on, just observation. Clean, unjudgmental, untouched, unanalyzed. And with a breath, you can come back up to the shoulders. 
and let all the tension in those arms and from the head down run out the tips of the fingers. <sighs> now I can bring the attention back up to the back of the neck and start down the chest, top of the shoulders, top of the rib cage, scapula. Lungs, breathing, needing no assistance from us. They just keep breathing. And through this, occasionally the miracles of the body become apparent. Breathing in and out. You can um, bring some attention to as much as you can to the organs in the diaphragm nestled there, keeping this incredible organism functioning. down to the pit of the stomach, the ganglia, endings, our source of strength. Energy center. The sex organs. backs of the thighs, tension, pressure on the sitting area, pressure, temperature differential there, interesting to just allow the body to be without any particular inter interpretation it's almost like a CCTV camera, just looking. No conclusions, no analysis, just being. And now we down, move down the legs, top of the thighs, to the knees. If you have your sitting on a chair and your feet are on the ground, you feel the weight of the foot on the floor. The attention moves down the calf, the shin, to the ankle. through the incredible complexity of the foot, all of those bones. Tips of the toes. We move to the back of the head. Take a deep breath, and on the out breath, allow all the tension 
everything held back to on the exhale flow out through the entire trunk of the body through the tips of the toes This leaves us very collected, very much here in this instant. Slowed down the thoughts. The feelings. Now we're going to work with a little sensation rotation where we amplify the sensation, just the sensation at this point, the first round. And we bring our attention again to the back of the head. And from there, we allow the awareness of the sensation in the right arm to amplify. And we can do that through the metaphor of breath, breathing, this awareness that's already present, but I'm using this tool to amplify it with the breath, to amplify the sensation in the right arm. And as much as possible to isolate the attention to the right arm including all the things we've talked about before. The weight of the hand on the thigh or the weight of the hand hanging freely along the side, air movement, nerve endings, temperature, very simple things uh, requiring no belief. No system. Just the attention. And now with that arm full of the awareness of the sensation. We're going to amplify that with the knowledge. The one thing that we actually always know, but very seldom acknowledge. We fill that arm with the knowledge, I am. Can we turn to the, the attention to the back of the head? just above the spine, that area. And now we send the awareness, the trigger to the awareness of the sensation, 
down the spine into the right leg. Isolating that limb, filling it with the attention on the sensation. And we've taken that as far as we can. Another breath, reminding ourselves of that sensation. Return the attention to the back of the head. And reminding ourselves by filling the right leg with the knowledge I am. returning the attention to the back of the head and moving to the left leg. Collecting the attention, the top of the spine, back of the head, sending that attention to fill the left leg Becoming aware of the sensation always present. The knowledge. Returning the attention to the back of the head. Gathering the attention. And sending the knowledge I am to the left leg. Returning the attention, top of the spine, back of the head, moving to the left arm, allowing the attention to reside as much as possible in that left arm, using sensation existing in that arm to pull the attention, hold the attention. Weight of the hand resting on the thigh, air movement, all the things we've talked about. They're always there. Generally a speaking, unless we have some discomfort, there's very little attention directed inward. 
except maybe to the ever-present voice in my head. We're giving the attention some attention. Maybe learning to direct it so that it becomes an asset in our lives rather than just like a little puppy we follow around. The left arm now full of sensation. Bring the attention back to the back of the head and allow the knowledge the one thing we are sure of have been since we took our first breath and before that I am conclude this exercise for today. Attention comes back to the top of the spine, back of the head, and we become aware of the sensation throughout the body. Again, you can breathe this in, whatever works for you. And one more breath to fill the entire body with the knowledge I am. Before we disengage from this practice, notice any differences you're sensing, feeling, just aware of from now, back to before we started. No huge descriptions. Just mark it down and move on. Thank you so much. Thanks, Don. <laughs> it feels like this, you know, uh, beingness continues to be woven into the doingness with this exercise. For me, for me, um, 
I still notice my mind going into like, oh, there's that thing I can do today. Oh, there's that thing. And oh, there's that thing. You, me you mentioned the, the two o'clock appointment or whatever it is for, for each person. But for me, it was like, oh, this and that. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I am. Oh, I am. Every time you said I am, I'm like, oh, I am. So it feels to me like I can take more of the sense of I amness and beingness into my daily. Whatever I choose to do, I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It is simple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, I mean, It is, you know, the, the essence, the truth of it is very simple. I've even come to a point where things are looking complex. I realize that I've lost that. Because there's just something about the mind. In, it needs things to be very complex. It's like the guy moving the shells um, in, the, in the Three Monty game, you know. It's like, which cup is the P under? <laughs> it wants to keep you guessing because for some reason, guessing is very important to it. Because there's, you know, I think it's, the mind is uh, in a sense, although, I mean, in one sense, is very much uh, that kind of a, an entity, you know, you know, you depend on it, you seem to, but just sitting through these quiet things and not using the mind only to give attention to sensation, you realize it can be re redirected from that complicating, never-ending analysis to a different functioning, which is being directed. If you look at the way you get to those complicated, difficult things, and you look closely, they're not two thinkers. So there's, what happens is there's one thinker confounding a, a yet what it wants to create as as an, an, an other it's not the way it is but it creates that you know in fact it creates i mean other all over the place <laughs> that's sort of the job you know and what the essence of where we're headed here is, is that the mind as we know it is kind of a usurper. The mind without death, I say purpose, you know, other than uh, daily life, it tends to, it carries you away on its own mm -hmm. convolutions, energy. I mean, it's this incredible energy, mm -hmm. very useful. But it, for most of us, it's, it's not um, channeled. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when we start heading into... Uh, I guess I could say, I mean, it's so common in the world, uh, addictive behavior, you know, which spans a lot more than substances and it, it, it spans attitudes, it spans, you know, I mean, we, we have all of these thoughts, feelings, ideas, concepts, etc., that really don't further us that we've adopted over the years just out of habit. 
And uh, so this is a moving away, maybe expanding those uh, ways of seeing things. Mm -hmm. And it does become more a part of your daily life as you go into it. And there will be, there's a resistance, you know, and it's interesting to see the resistance come up, but don't fight it. Just look at it, just allow it and go, oh, I see you, you know, mm -hmm. just see it and uh, allow it to be. Um, if you do try and resist or fight it, that's exactly what it requires to maintain itself, is that resistance. This seems like a, it's a pattern to interrupt. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it also, in a very different way, it reminds me of some of the spiritual classes that I've taken where they have a little timer and then the timer, like it, it, it'll, it might be some time randomly within the hour, but then someone will ring a bell and it's like, okay, everybody stops yeah. for 10 seconds or whatever. And then just breathes and comes back to center, comes back to the I am place. Yeah. And then, okay, now what's really important and it kind of allows the spaciousness to reassess. Yeah. And so, you know, all of those things are in the direction of getting that, oh, that bell installed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like when you go onto an app, you know, it says install, <laughs> you know, and you gotta wait a little while, if, you know, it's gotta go around, you know, until, okay, it's installed open. <laughs> you know, and uh, there's a funny, there was a, an ad 10 years ago, I think, I can't remember what store it was, but uh, this woman, it was like, uh, maybe, it was, I, I guess the place had sales that started like at six o'clock in the morning or something, you know, when people would stay up all night to go to them. Yeah. But she was just very pretty face and she had her hands on the glass on the window and she's going, open, 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 open. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we gotta do is we gotta open. <laughs> We got to install and open. So we install something that we truly are into the apparentness. the apparent world that we reside in. Which reminds me of the, you know, the idea that there's one physical planet and each being on that planet is its own world. I mean, it's like, which is the cause or the effect even, either or, because they're both the same thing, of all the conflict, the seeming conflict in the, in, in the world, yeah. is that we each live in a completely different world in our selves. And when that starts to, uh, when that world that we seem to separately exist in starts to get amorphous or fuzzy around the edges, then we open out into what's real. You know, which is interesting, you know, influences in the world in the last Weeks, months have been very strong in making those edges fuzzy. Yes. And it's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. And we'll take something away as 
as is, you know, in the old English, as is our want. <laughs> we'll take something away. And for some more, for some not so much. <laughs>